All right, hey guys, Haithi here with the Merlin Guide. Sorry this took so much longer than expected. I've been kind of busy the past two weeks with all the corona stuff going on. I was supposed to move into a new house this past week, but then I couldn't move because we couldn't get any refurnisher there because they couldn't deliver it because of corona and so on and so on. So the last two weeks have been kind of AIDS for me, but I finally got the time to make the new Merlin Guide. And it actually came at a pretty good time because there's a new mid build out that a lot of people are trying that I'm gonna show you in this video in the build section. But anyways, if you enjoyed the guide, please like and sh subscribe. You know, if you have any friends that want to learn the character, send them this shit. It helps a lot. Comment down below what guide you want to see next or if there's a certain god you want to see a play-by-play -play on. You can also DM me on Twitter. Even if I don't respond to your message, I do read every single message I get on Twitter. And my DMs are always open, so you can contact me any way you want. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Let's get right into this shit. All right, the first thing I'm going to show you guys is builds because I know a lot of people just want to see a good build for the god and then they want to go figure out the god on themselves, which is completely fine. I do recommend you watch the entire video so you learn everything there is to learn. But if you just want to, you know, look at the builds, I have two really good builds for you and then we can go straight into the god. So I hope you guys enjoy. I think we're going to go over the lifesteal build first and then right after a more cooldown based build. The first build I want to show you guys is a new build that's been being played at high elo ranked a lot which is lifesteal merlin which you can either start with bancroft's 2 which is i think is the bad this. start or you can start with oh nope you can start with full lifesteal boots so this means at level one you'd sit in fountain minions would spawn and then you'd wait till after minions had spawned till you get 50 gold and then you just straight up buy full lifesteal boots level one so i think this is the strongest level one build if you're going lifesteal merlin with this you would get no pots though but that's fine these boots give you mana and by the time you run out of mana you'll have enough of gold to back for your first back which would be tiny so trinket and then more pops and then on your second back you're going to ideally want to finish bancroft's then after bancroft's is done with these two items you're going to want to go to spear of desolation if they have healing you're going to want to, you're going to, want to go divine ruin instead but if they don't have healing, Spear Desolation is definitely the way to go. Then you want to go back into Typhon's Fang. And then after Typhon's Fang, you're going to want to buy a Soul Reaver. Here it is. Sorry, you have to oh, search it. Soul Reaver. This. And then last item, you have some choices. I like to get 10% more pen with the last item. So let me just hover that tab. So ideally, my choices for last item would be Staff of Mirrodin or... Where's... Oh, Pythagorean's Peace. Or, uh, or ob shard one of these three ideally staff of mirrodin's there if you want more cooldown and you want like you know the double ability cast pythag's piece is there if you want damage plus health because remember this gives lifesteal as well and lifesteal gives you more power because of typhon's passive and then uh ob shard is here in case you just want to max out your percent percent pen because this build right now only has 20 percent pen and ob shard would cap it off at 40 this gives you a bunch of damage and health. This gives you uh, a bunch of damage and CDR. So like your last item would be in between Pythag so or Shard or Staff of Mirrodin. So here's what an ideal build would look like. Here's also what an ideal lifesteal build would look like. And here's also what an ideal lifesteal build would look like. Also, I should quickly mention, if you do the other start I talked about, so let me just sell all my items for the lifesteal build. Sell, 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 sell. sell. Do, do, do. If you were to go T2 Bancroft level 1, on your first back, you'd want to get Boots 2. And then on your second back, I'd go Lifesteal, uh, not Lifesteal, I'd go CD Boots over Lifesteal Boots. I think the main power of Lifesteal Boots is you can rush them out of base to get um, 75 Magical Power at level 1, which is really strong. But if you're not rushing them, I don't really see the point in them. I think the 10 CDR is way better on Merlin. So if you're rushing Bancroft's T2, I'd get CD Boots into so Bancroft's, you know, then the same build. Spear Deso, Pythagorean's Peace, where's Soul Reaver? Soul Reaver. And then last item, one of these items that I showed you previously. I'm just gonna do Staff of Mirrodin. So here's the build if you were gonna go um, Bancroft's 2 to start. But again, I think rushing this is super strong. 80, almost 80 power level one. That's gross, bro. You'll fucking one shot everything. All right, 
the next build I want to show you is a more standard safe build from last season that you see a lot. So this is just a typical Merlin build from last season. You start with boots to do more one. On your first pack, you get cooldown boots. Then you finish do more. Then where is spear spear deso? Let me search this. Then you get spear deso. If they have healing, you want to get divine ruin instead. Let's say they don't. I'm gonna get spear deso. Then here is where I can get coin if I'm ahead and I think I'm gonna be fighting. But if I don't think I'm ahead and I don't think I'm gonna be fighting, I can get ob shard. For this example, I'm just gonna get coin. So and after coin, you get soul reaver. And then last item, you get staff. Of Mirrodin. Now, this is your typical old Merlin build, you know, the old reliable. This build still does work, even though a lot of people do the lifesteal build. This build is still fine. There's nothing wrong with this build. You do a bunch of damage and you have a bunch of CDR. The difference between this build and the last build is that build focuses more on lifesteal and power, while this one focuses on cooldown and power. So, those are the main differences. But this build is still very reliable and very good. So, don't hesitate to go this build if you like cooldown reduction. All right, now we're gonna go over Merlin's kit overview and what his abilities do exactly. This part of the video is for people that have no idea what Merlin does or just have general ideas of what Merlin does, but they're not 100% sure. So I'm gonna go over each one of his abilities in depth. I'm not gonna show any mechanics or combos that's later on in the video. Also, if you already know what Merlin does, I still recommend you watch this part just so like, you know, you get, you know for sure, because there's always little things that each god does that you might have like glossed over or like you never realized. And I'm going to go over all that right now, starting with this three. Also, to make it easier, instead of going over his one, two, three, and four, we're going to start with this three, then go over his passive, then his ultimate, and then his one and two in all the respective stances. All right, so let's get right into the ability overview, starting with Merlin's three, Flicker. So this is Flicker. That's it. It's not too in depth it's just a short range play for me so that's the max range you can cast it at you can short cast it as well if you really want you can cast Confused it in place yet? you can cast it at full length which is like around right there where my arrow is there's nothing too deep about this ability it does let you blink over Looking walls it is short range remember it's not too long so if a wall is too thick like this wall right here i cannot blink over it but right here where it's slimmer i can blink over this so nothing too in depth about merlin's blink it is just a flicker Confused, also yes. this is not a dash or a jump so a wheelix cannot pull you off this it doesn't have dash mechanics because you know obviously it can go over walls this is the equivalent of the blink relic so it's the same as using can i not okay you can't look at blink can i search blink it's the same as using this shit. it has the same properties as blink so not a jump a wheelix cannot pull you but not a dash you can go over walls the next ability of merlin's i'm going to go over is his uh passive his passive is also pretty straightforward it's basically anytime merlin uses an ability he gets a little charge down here as you see he has three charges that he can hold at once so you get a charge you can hold three at once and they last for around five seconds anytime you auto attack with a charge available your charge will be consumed and your auto attack will do bonus damage and this bonus damage can also apply on hit effects like soul reverse i'm gonna show you that right now my auto hits for 165 i dash so i have a charge available for three seconds i auto attack it does 165 plus 124 which is the passive and then 51 which is soul reaver see you can see that all right here so my two auto attacks the passive proc and soul reaver so that so merlin's passive and his three are pretty straightforward just a short range blink and then a mini small polynomicon that's all it really is all right the next ability i'm going to show you is probably merlin's most in-depth ability his alt elemental masteries there's a lot of misconception about this alt a lot of things this alt does that people don't understand or don't know so i'm going to break it down for you the first thing you have to know about this alt is it's not an it's not an explosion it's an implosion and then an explosion all right so merlin is obviously a stance switcher and his alt is a stance switch ability his alt will implode doing damage and having an effect based on what stance you are currently in and then it'll explode doing damage again and having another effect uh, depending on what stance you're going into. So right now I'm purple and I'm going to go into fire. So I'm going to explain what all the effects are first. So if you alt with purple, you're going to do damage and a small knockup. It's not a big knockup. It's a really small knockup, but it's a knockup. If you alt into or start from fire, you're going to do damage and then leave a burning tick effect. If you alt into or start with ice, you're going to do damage and then leave a slow on the target. 
So I'm going to show you what I mean by that right now, is I'm going to go from purple to fire. So remember, that's a knock up into a burn, and both of these do damage. So if I ult, I do damage and knock up, and then I do more damage and I burn. Did you see that? How I exploded in purple, how I imploded in purple, and then I exploded into fire? So now we're going to do the same thing with fire and ice. So I'm going to uh, implode with fire, doing damage and leaving a burn, and then explode in ice, doing damage again and leaving a slow. So all fire, ice, and now he's slowed and the burn's on him. And then I can also do the same. I can go from ice to purple, doing slow and then a knock. -up. So damage slow, damage knock. -up. Well, the other thing you may have noticed about Merlin Alt is it does let you decide which stance you want to go into if you don't click anything like if you just alt and click nothing it'll always follow a set pattern of arcane stance in a fire stance in a frost stance back into arcane and so on and so on so the order you see here is the order it's always going to go into but you can override this order now i'm going to alt again and i want you guys to watch my one through three abilities right here so if i, I alt this ability turns into arcane this ability turns into fire and this ability turns into ice i'm going to show you that one more time for uh, just so if you didn't catch that alt look at that you see that so what that means is it lets you choose which stance you want to go into next so if I'm in frost, normally I go right back into purple because that's the designated order. But if I want to go into fire, I alt and then I click my two key or whatever your second ability button is because this is the fire one and it'll let you override your alt and go into fire. So I can alt click two and now I'm in fire even though normally I'd go back into purple. Now I'm in fire and say I want to go into purple instead of going forward into frost. I can alt and click my one ability and then I'll go into uh, purple because that's what the one is. The one is purple. So one alt, one ability and now I'm in purple. I don't have to follow the set order because I can override it. And I'm going to show you it one more time. Normally you go from purple to fire. If I, cl if I click my alt and I click my third ability, I'll go into ice. Many tools at my so you can choose whichever stance you want to go into. You don't have to go into your set stance. But if you're just going the, the standard forward, like, you know, purple to fire, fire to ice, ice to purple, you can you don't have to press anything to just let it go by itself. But if you don't want to do that and you want to choose your stance, then make sure to use your first, second, and third ability keys, whatever you have them set to. And on console, what the console is the same thing. Whatever your keys are or your buttons, I guess, for your first, second, and third ability, that's what you press. And that is Merlin's alt in a nutshell. That's all there really is to it. Oh, I should also mention... It resets all your cooldowns but your three. So if you use your one and your two and you alt, whatever stance you go into, your one and your two will be up again. That does not work on your three. Your three will be down. Your three does not, it shares a cooldown with all your other stances. Your one and your two do not. So if you ever cast these abilities, try and cast your abilities always before alting. That way you have a fresh set of abilities readily available. All right, the next thing we're going to go over is Merlin's basic abilities, his one and two in all the different stances. We're going to go over his purple stance first, and then we're just going to go in the normal order. So purple, fire, frost, all right? So Merlin's purple one is basically you throw out a galaxy that does damage and leaves a tick. So the galaxy starts off really small, and the farther you throw it, the bigger it gets. When this galaxy hits someone, it does initial burst damage, and then it creates a giant circle where if the person who took the initial damage is in the circle, they'll take tick damage. Also, this the after circle gets bigger depending on how big the galaxy is. So I'm going to show you what I mean. If I throw a really small galaxy, the circle is going to be really small. But if I back up and throw a really big Unmake galaxy, them. the circle is going to be really big. If you want to get rid of this tick damage, all you have to do is walk out of the circle. Also, to take the tick damage, you have to get hit by the initial ability. So if I throw my one right here, even though both these guys would be in the circle, since they didn't get hit by the initial tick, they don't take damage. I'll show you that again. So this Odin got hit and this one didn't, so it's not taking the tick damage even though it's in the bigger circle. This ability also me. does go through units, so look at that, you can hit multiple people. Once again, I'm just going to put this on default and default. It also goes over walls, so I can one, as you can see, it goes over the wall, does initial damage and the tick damage. His second ability in his purple stance is a giant circle, and it's pretty straightforward. It is just a knock. -up. So you put it somewhere, it channels for a second, after the channel, it knocks up everyone in that area. There you go. That's all there is to it. This can hit multiple enemies. It'll hit anyone that's in the area. So as you can see, they all got hit. So Merlin's second purple ability, not too deep. That's all it is. So a channel and then a knockup. 
Also, you can cast this over walls as well. No, uh, there you go. As you can see, he took the damage and he got knocked up. So that's Merlin's purple one and purple two. All right, the next abilities of Merlin I'm gonna show you is Merlin's Fire Stance 1 and 2, all right? So Merlin's Fire Stance 1 is a really satisfying ability to hit. Here's what the target looks like. Once you use it, you just channel a, a beam of fire at someone doing damage and applying a tick. You can also move around while casting this. You do move slower, but you can move around fully. Also, the way the tick works is it's not, um, if you apply the tick once, all it does is refresh the tick. You cannot stack the ticks. So if I burn this guy and he starts burning for five seconds uh, with my first hit of the one, and then I hit him again, it doesn't add a second burn. It refreshes the first one. So if the first burn ticks five times, for example, and it ticks three times, and then I hit him again, it'll just start back at five. It won't add five more. It'll just go back to the max, which is five. So here's Merlin's one again burning people and with a, a every point five seconds i think maybe point two yeah it's every point five seconds it burns them for two seconds and applies tick damage also this ability i should mention goes through people so you can hit multiple people and if i can get over this wall oh it also goes through walls its range is pretty short so be careful when throwing it over walls but it does go over walls the next ability we're going to talk about is Merlin's two, the, dr the, the dragons, all right? So Merlin throws out two Burn dragons that do damage in a cone with its little center area. A lot of people think the center area does bonus damage. The center area does the same amount of damage as either side. The only difference the center area has is it does prot shred. So if someone's caught in this little center cone you see here, their protections are being shred. If they're caught on the outer sides, they just take damage. So the middle does damage and prot shed, the sides just do damage. This ability, it's really, really good at burning people. The patch we're currently playing on, it just got nerfed, but it's still really good at burning tanks and objectives. So this shit, if you can lock someone down in it, this will do like thousands of damage. This shit hurts. All right, so that's Merlin's fire. Oh, Confused I should probably yet? show, you know, hits multiple people. As you can see, it's hitting all of them. And just like all his other abilities so far, you can cast it over a wall. All right, and that's Merlin's fire one and two. Also, his second ability, even though people think it, it doesn't apply the burn that the first ability in the alt do. His second ability applies no burn. <laughs> a lot of people thought it disapplied burn. I don't know why, but, but they thought that. It, it, it applies no burns at all. It's just prot shed and damage. Merlin Ice Dance 1 and 2, all right? So Merlin's Ice 1 is a pretty straightforward ability. It's just a long range, straight line damage that when it hits people, it does damage and does more damage in AoE. So that's all there is to it. Damages them and does more damage in AoE. It does the same damage in the AoE, sorry. So if I hit this middle Odin bot, the two Odin bots on the side will also take the same damage. So 560 for all of them. This ability does not go through walls, so this is Merlin's first ability that doesn't. So if I'm over here and I shoot it at this wall, it does not go through walls. It just it stops at walls. This ability will also do bonus damage to people that are slowed. So if they're slowed by anything, could be your ally's slow, could be your own slow, could be um, you know a horrific emblem. If they're slowed, they're going to take bonus damage. I'll show, and you're wondering, how do you slow them? Well, that's where Merlin's second ice ability comes in blizzard what the fuck's happening to the target wait what do you guys see that why is it it's like the target is really skinny here and then you put it here and it becomes thick what's I... is that a... i've never seen that that is weird okay so merlin's second ability is a giant circle he places it down it rains ice the ice does damage to you and slows you the more you get hit the more slowed you are also obviously since it's a giant circle and multiple enemies they can all get slowed and remember, if they are slowed, you take bonus damage from the one. So if I'm slowing him and I won him, it did 503 and then bonus damage, all right? Oh god, sorry, my throat. So this is Merlin's slow ability. This is also a really good wave clear. And unlike the ice one, you can cast this over walls. But usually you want to use your ice two first and then slow someone for your ice one to get the bonus damage in. So that's Merlin's ice kit.
All right, the next thing we're gonna go over is Merlin's level order. What do you level at each level? So at level one, when you start the game, you're gonna wanna start your two, because it's your best wave clear at level one. Then at level two, you're gonna wanna get your one. Then at level three, here's when you can make a decision. If you want better clear slash uh, more damage, you can get another point in your one. If you just wanna stay safe and you think you're gonna get ganked or you may be in trouble, you can get your three. For this example, I'm gonna get my three. Then at level four, you get your one again. Level five, you get your alt. Do not skip your alt like how you do on some other stand switchers. You always want to level Merlin alt. It does a lot of damage. And now we're just going to max our one. So at level six, the one, seven, one, eight. We're going to hold a point. Nine, we're going to level the one and the alt. Ten, we're going to level the two. Eleven, you're going to level the two. Twelve, you're going to level the two. Thirteen, you're going to level the alt. Fourteen, you're going to level the two. Fifteen, you're going to level the three. Sixteen, the three. 17 the alt, 18 to 3, 19 to 3, and to finish it off at level 20 with the alt. And that's Merlin's level order, pretty straightforward, just a 1 max into a 2 max into a 3 max. No big, like, secret about it. Alright, the next thing I'm going to go over is Merlin's damage disposal. and his combos and some smaller mechanics that you may not know. Alright, so... Merlin, his basic combos and all stances are pretty easy. You just want to usually just want to one, two, two, one, you know, shit like that. For example, purple stance, your most bread and butter team fight combo is the one, two. You know, you one people get the initial damage, start the tick. As they try and walk out, you two them to pull them back into the center. So on this Odin ball, I'll show you right now, he's trying to walk away, I pull him back in. So that's pretty simple for purple stance. Fire stance, your basic fire combo is also pretty similar. You two someone and then one them while they're in the two. Nothing too in de depth about it. You know, you can shoot your two in front of someone so they walk into it. And then ice stance is also very simple. His base ice stance combo is basic as fuck. Two people to get them in the slow and then one. All his base combos, when just in a stand, are very simple. It's when you combine your ult, when they get kind of like extra, all right? Where his damage and his combos really come from is his ult. You want to make sure you're using your ult properly. So uh, use your ult to reset your CDs or to peel or use it to combo with your other abilities, all right? I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Say you're in a team fight and you're in the back of a team fight and their jungler, soul laner, support, anyone jumps on you and dives you. What would you do? Blink away, me. right? Normally, that's what you can do, but what I suggest doing is Merlin's really good at turning fights. So, remember, your purple stance knocks up. So, if you ever get jumped on, you usually want to either start in purple stance or go into the purple stance. Because, say, uh, okay, well, say this Odin bot is someone jumping on me. They jump on me, I immediately ult, and they get knocked up, displacing whatever they were going to do. If that was a Hun Bats and he tried to two me as soon as he blinked, he would get knocked up. If that was, you know, a, a Daji trying to blink auto auto me, they'd get knocked up and they'd be unable to auto auto. I'm gonna show you that one more time. So someone, so you're just fighting in a team fight. You're in your purple stance, going one two. You're just in the back throwing out autos. Someone jumps on you, you just alt to displace them, turn around, and then you burn them as fast as possible. Also, you notice how I went from uh, purple to blue there? I did that is because ice stance has your best uh, burst damage in it. So remember, Ice Stance 1 does more damage to slowed targets, and you may think, well that kind of sucks because you have to Ice Stance 2 yourself, and then people have to walk into the 2 for you to do the don't bonus damage, that's wrong. If someone jumps on you, you can Alt into Ice, and remember your ult, Ice Alt applies a slow, so you can Alt into Ice and then 1 someone with your Alt slow, and they take a bunch of bonus damage, an insane amount of bonus damage. So you can actually burst people insanely fast. And while you're doing this, remember, you can weave autos. So let me just go back into purple. Say someone jumps on me and I'm in purple stance in a team fight. So I'm in a team fight. I'm just gonna one, two their front line. I get jumped on from behind. I can just alt ice, one, auto, two. And then I one, auto, two. I get the bonus damage from my one because of, uh, because of my alt slow. And then I can two to continue the slow and auto attack in between to get my passive procs. What you can also do is let me just uh, alt. Let me just sell this so and buy it. Power, it's such a small item. You can also use Staff of Mirrodin. This is why Staff of Mirrodin is so good on him, because you can do this. So say I'm in a team fight. I one two someone in purple stance. Someone pulls up behind me. Alt into ice. One one auto two, 
and that's a bunch of burst damage. That's an insane amount of damage that no assassin, if they're full damage, is going to be able to just like casually go through that without like even slightly being worried because you're hitting them with two casts of this, a cast of this, and then uh, two hits of this and your passive auto attacks like they're going to be taking a shit ton of damage in this situation so starting off in purple stance in a team fight in purple stance and then transitioning to ice stance when you get dove is really good you can also do this with fire stance so say you're against a jungler that you don't have to that you don't have to burst that you can just like let them fight you and you can out win the trade for example, if you're against a Robin and a Robin threes you, he's gonna one shot you with this three one combo. That's his whole thing. So you'd probably want to go into ice and try and burst him first. But say you're against a jungler that doesn't just insta burst, that doesn't like insta one shot you, or if you're getting dove by a soul laner or a more tanky character, what you can do is alt into fire. So you start in purple to knock them up, alt into fire, place your two on yourself, and just one them and kite around your two. So if they want to fight you, they have to fight in your damage and they lose their entire health bar. And remember, as long as you're fighting in your CDs, their protections are getting shred and they are going to lose the fight every time. Also, another thing I should mention is how to do objectives on Merlin. Your best objective burn on Merlin is, I'll show it on here I guess, is you want to start in ice and then transition into fire. So the best way to, to do objectives on Merlin is auto attack 2, auto attack 1, alt into fire, auto attack 2, I'm just going to beads, auto attack 1. So that's how you normally do it. Of course you wouldn't want to get knocked up, and I did there, that's why I beads, but like that's your best combo. I'll show you that one more time just for reference. So you start in ice stance. Start a nice stance, can this hurry up? Auto attack 2, auto attack 1, alt into fire, auto attack 2, auto attack 1. And that's how you burn it ASAP. Of course, I'm burning it extra hard because this is a fire giant at like 0 0 and I'm full build. But if you have a team with you, that combo with your team DPSing it will one shot fire giant and gold fury. Oh, the other thing I should mention is Staff of Mirrodin's effect with his other stances. So let's resell this. Staff of Mirrodin is good in Ice Stance because obviously you can double shotgun someone with your Ice 1. In Fire Stance it's pretty weak, but here's what you can do in Purple Stance. In Purple Stance, ideally what you want to do is change into Purple and you want to knock people up twice. So I'd go for Knock Up 1, Knock Up. So you just chain CC people forever. That's the ideal situation in, in Purple Stance. In Ice Stance, it's what I showed you guys already. You want to go for the slow into a double shotgun. And the Fire Stance is the only stance where Staff of Mirrodin is kind of weak. The best thing you can do in Fire Stance, ideally, is if you're getting dove by a jungler who, who like, you know... If you're getting dove by a jungler who you can't 1v1 or there's no chance in you ever beating them, what you can do is this so this works with any stance, I'm just going to show you with fire, is you can alt and then use your staff of Mirrodin to double blink away. That's also something you can do if you know for a fact you cannot 1v1 whoever diving you, but usually as Merlin you're able to 1v1 whoever is diving you pretty freely. Oh god. The rest of Merlin is basically using your CDs off your teammates. Purple stance is best for fighting in team fights where you're in the back by yourself. Because if I'm in the back, I can just look what my supports are doing. And then I throw my combo on top and I just let the damage go. Fire stance is best for when you're playing close to your support. Because my support can just CC one of the front line and I can 2 1 burn them instantly and they lose all their HP to my prot shred. And then ice stance is best for long range poke and harass. Because you can we can just be in a team fight and I can just slow you, walk away, walk up, one you from a mile away, walk away, poke you again from a mile away, slow you. So in team fights, ice stance is the best to be like a nuisance and poke people with. Purple stance is the best if you're going to combo with your teammates. And then fire stance is the best if you're playing near your support or near someone with CC to where you can lock someone down in your two one. Okay. All right, now we're gonna quickly go over how to use those combos and mechanics and stuff in a, what's a cult game, in a conquest game. So I'm gonna show you what I mean about like when to use which stance. So say I'm in a jungle fight by fire giant and you're just chilling right here. 
when you're here or when you're here I like staying in purple stance because usually your front lines are gonna be here and here and you can hang back and you can just stay right here and you can just spam purple one two and do damage to their front line and if their back line gets engaged on you can blink in and shoot extra far so say I'm here and my supports get a really good initiation on the back line I can blink in Into one two also by standing right here you do open up this flank here but if someone goes on you can instantaneously just alt auto two one hide around in your fire and burn them down of course if you're playing farther if, if you're playing closer to your support so say my supports up here and i'm playing around here which is a little more dangerous or if my supports here and i'm playing right here i can stay in fire stance and as soon as my support goes for cc i can just two one on top of the cc and instantly burn whoever gets hit and one shot them your left tower and say I don't have anyone with me, we're just at the beginning of the fight and we're chilling, I can just stay here in ice stance, throw out poke, 2-1, I can just constantly harass, 1, look away, me. chill out, wait for my cooldowns to come back up, 1, someone, walk away, someone's over here, annoy them with a the slow, stuff like that. So that's how you're normally going to want to play jungle fights, ideally. You want to poke and harass with your ice stance. You want to use your two stance to burn uh, when you're getting a gun on. Or if you have CC and you want to use your one, to uh, your purple stance to follow up off your teammates and gauges from far away. Also, remember to weave in your auto attacks in between your abilities. Your auto attacks do a lot of damage, especially with Soul Reaver and late game when you're full build. Like, these things fucking hurt, dog. They swing. So make sure you're always, you know, one auto twoing stuff like that. Oh, I didn't two there, but here, I see what I mean. Like, if you're in ice stance, you're one auto twoing. If you're in purple stance, you want to one two, and then use your autos on them as they're being CC'd. And then fire stance, that's the only stance where, like, auto attacks don't matter too, too much. But make sure you weave in your autos with your abilities. And right, now I'm going to show you how to start level 1 in Conquest. We're going to start with the Lifesteal build I was talking about, right? So remember, the Lifesteal build, I'm going to go Boots 2, Purification Beads, and then I'm going to wait in base for full Boots. Also, when you load into the game, you always want to alt into Ice Stance right away, because you always want to start the game in Ice Stance. And then I'm going to level my 2 in Fountain, and I'm just going to wait here. And now we're going to wait out the full timer, and then wait till I have full Boots, alright? So you just sit here and wait for full Boots. Ow. Oh my god, I've never realized how long the beginning of the game is until you sit in a, like, uh, until you sit by yourself against Ho Yi Bot, huh? Oof. So close. The cold sets in. Minions have spawned. Minions have spawned. Okay, I'm gonna open up my shop the moment I get 650. I'm gonna buy it and then I'm gonna head out of fountain with the blazing haste movement speed buff. So buy it, head out of fountain. Remember, I still have the blazing haste buff so I can get to lane pretty fast. Now I'm gonna walk by speed and hug this wall. That way, my jungler will do the speed and I'll still get the farm. Of course, we don't have a jungler here so I don't get the farm. But normally you'd get speed buff farm. I'm gonna walk up for the wave. I'm gonna auto two, auto alt, auto two. And that's how you literally one shot the wave instantly. Look at that. The wave is instantly gone. Now you'd be level two, so you can walk over here and you can use your fire one on these and kill these instantly. And that's how you'd start the game with the lifesteal build. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to start the game with the other build I talked about. Vampire Alright, trolls. now here's the come other build. On, Remember, you're going to start the game by automatically Rhyme ulting the ice stance, leveling your two. I'm going to get boots two, do mark one, and a mana pot, get my beads, walk out of base. Do, 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 do. Bop, ba, da, bop. Now we're just going to sit here and wait. So of course, in this example, I don't have a jungler, but normally you'd have a jungler here doing the buff with you. With this build, you're just going to wait right here. Oh, God. Do I have a special emote on this skin? I don't. That sucks. Oh, my God. Minions. 
minions have spawned. Alright, minions have spawned. Remember, speed buff spawns at 20. So, at 20 from right here, I'm going to use my ice 2 and then head to them. Alright, 18, 19, 20. I'm going to ice 2 to help my jungler. This way I'll get speed buff as well. And now I walk to lane. Now, as minions meet, I want to auto attack alt, auto attack 2. Alright, that's your maximum and best damage, and now you just auto attack the wave down. You keep killing the wave. So, auto it down slowly and slowly. And then now, normally you'd be level 2, so you can use your fire one and clear these small camps. Of course, I don't have a jungler, so I didn't get the speed, so I didn't get the smalls. So, so I didn't hit level 2, so I can't use my one of these smalls, but that's what you do next. And that's how you start the game with this build. Alright, that was the Merlin guide. I hope you guys enjoyed. If I really hope you learned something that you didn't know before. You know, I hope it helped you out. Of course, if you liked it, please like the video and sub. It helps me a lot. It gives me that good old ego boost. And if you want to share the video too, that would be sick as fuck. Anyways, if you guys want to see something in the future, that ask anything, just comment it below and I can probably do it. Of course, I might be a little slow on videos just because, like, I am still in the process of trying to move through while Corona is going around. So it is kind of AIDS, but it shouldn't be too difficult. If there's any certain guides you want to see, uh, any, like, certain top five mids you want to see for, like, rank or some shit, or just play-by-plays on certain gods, just let me know. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Heighty the fuck out.